Okay, so hi guys, this is the third masterclass for BMET's Level 3 Extended Media course and today I'm joined by photographer, illustrator, general cool guy Max Ellis <laughs> with the pink hair <laughs> um, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, photography and a bit about his career as an illustrator and a photographer. So firstly, Max, um, how did you get into photography? Well, I did a degree um, in illustration and photography. So I did actually do it at college. So it was you know, dark room stuff, wet processing, and all that stuff back in the 80s. Yeah. So it was, yeah, I mean, I, like, I always liked photography. Um, I didn't really, much of my sort of regret, I didn't really take a lot of pictures when I was younger, so I didn't want to sort of wander around with a camera like I do now. But then that sort of film day, so it was really expensive. But yeah, then, I mean, then I didn't really use photography much until um, I moved into computers and that side of it, really. So I painted. Okay. And like more recently, you've kind of moved into a lot of Photoshop work as well and using Photoshop kind of as an illustrator and to manipulate. I know a lot of your gym photos are kind of manipulated in Photoshop. When did that kind of become a part of your career? Well, it was, I mean, yeah, the gym stuff isn't really manipulated at all. So that's just, that's just, I mean, that's treated, but not okay. manipulated. The Photoshop side of it and the computer side of it came because I was doing a cover for EMI um, and I was painting it, and halfway through the band or the rep company decided they wanted to done on as on a computer, like computer art. So I went, yeah, I can do that. And I didn't actually own, I didn't actually own the computer or have a camera or anything. But, so I actually blagged it. I was actually bought my um, computer by uh, Jonathan Ross, and Vic Reeves bought me my scanner and camera, and then I. Um, set up in a in a shed in the countryside and over three months learned how to do computers and photography and uh, design when well, i delivered the final artwork on 20 floppy disks joined together as because it was back it's like in the night in the early 90s mid 90s and i and you couldn't bring it there wasn't a hard disk or anything like that you had to link floppy disks together so i brought this thing and i designed it on three formats for this so you know tape um, LP and, uh, and something else, sort of CD probably. But um, yeah, so it was Matt, so I just lied basically and, and then learned how to do it. And then I just changed because I was painting at the time, all my illustration was painting, and I just started doing all my jobs digitally. And The Guardian allowed me to swap over and do that. So I then just, tra it just basically transformed into a photo illustrator from that point. Okay, and you've had a lot of work published. I mean, as a as an um, illustrator and a photographer, do you think it's mm. in today's kind of marketplace? Do you think it's a viable f uh, career path for someone to go into? I know at the moment, as a freelancer, it's kind of really <laughs> difficult. But do you think, as you know, for some of our students, do you think it would be a viable career path for them to go into? Well. It used to be when I was doing it, and I was doing four or five covers a week for the Guardian and Independent. So, and what those were were say they want someone have a pair of shopping bag with some graphics on the shopping bag. So I'd take a photograph of the hand and the hand holding the shopping bag, and then do the graphics and Photoshop onto the a bag or, or that kind of job. Um, and I did that for five or six years, like solidly, um, and then. Um, Basically, the magazines and newspapers run out of money, and they just started doing the whole lot in house. So they've got now a Photoshop guy in the house that does that job that I used to do. So not really. It's not a really. I mean, I'm sure there are odd jobs out there, but the actual bulk of that work is done in house now. So all the Photoshop photo editing jobs have, come, have gone. Right. Okay. And um, so, <laughs> do you do you pick up? The sort of majority of your income from freelance photography work, or yeah, no, I'm sort of 99. Well, up until the last week, I was a, you know a fairly successful freelance photographer doing mainly private commissions. So, like all the work I do was for you know, like uh, individuals, 
uh, bodybuilders, physique people, uh, fitness people, PTs who they, you know basically need content for their websites for any magazine stuff they're doing, you know that kind of thing. And the other outlets I do are the squirrels. They bring quite a lot of money in for yeah. some photographs with squirrels doing stuff in the back garden. Um, and they, yeah, that, that sort of is income. And then the stags as well. So I find of wildlife as well, like the local stags and animals, and then sell those. They, I've got a newspaper at the moment sort of looking at doing a story on social distancing with stags because I did a post an image of the stags all walk, walking in a, a nicely gapped row. So they'll run that, and I've got um, a syndication agents for that kind of work. Okay, so you said that brings in quite a lot of income. How do you kind of monetize your photographs? Do you sell them to websites, or do you sell them to sort of card companies? Or yeah, I do. Yeah, I've just sold. I mean, I've got a few card companies that are doing stuff. So I've got like three or four companies I've sold licenses to. But I actually got one through the other day. Which is really funny. So it's from uh, from the states, and oh. I basically I sold this image of the squirrel to them, um, and I had no idea what they were doing with it. I knew that they were doing something with it, and it went through the post. And they basically cut my squirrels out, stuck them in a forest, and put masks on them. And it's just like nothing like my. Why do you bother buying my photograph? I'm just going to take it apart. You're going to be any two squirrels. It's just like insane. So it's almost a surprise, but I've got a load of, um, there's a British company that does a load of packaging and stuff. They bought a load of stags and stuff last year, which they've used across their range. So that's, you know, packaging and cards and uh, gift bags and that kind of stuff. And then I've got like two or three people, uh, at, like companies that have syndicated single images, which they then use on their Christmas range, like a three-year license. So, yeah, I mean, it's sort of, it's bits and pieces, you know, it's not like a solid income. And by far the most income was through the bodybuilder stuff. Yeah. Because that, you know, but that's just like literally gone now. I mean, it, it will be back, obviously, when we're out this lockdown. But, you know, currently you, you cannot go in the gym. You can't even get close. I mean, I can do distance stuff, but, you know, no, that's gone. So I'm basically to find other ways of getting income now. And how did you kind of get into photographing bodybuilders? Was that just literally you were at the gym and said, I'm a photographer? Or no, Well, I was, the story behind that particular thing is I, was the, I wanted to do an exhibition which was half drag queens and half bodybuilders. Because I just loved the idea. I mean, it's the concept of change, so people would change themselves. And I love the idea of the private view with all the sort of chaos that would ensue with it. Homophobic bodybuilders. And they and then I sort of started to shooting for that really in the gym. So it wasn't for my, it was for only for my own personal purposes. And they just because they're basically spent all their lives training and they love being photographed, they gradually started asking me to do shoots to allow people flying from all around the world to do shoots here. So you know, it's quite interesting how that, well, I don't advertise, so it's sort of, you know, all word of mouth. Yeah, awesome. Well, I think that's probably about enough for my students to be getting on with. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Max. It's really great to uh, talk to you, and no, thanks no, for your time. Um, and hopefully I'll see you soon when all this is yeah. over. Yeah, don't go out, kids. Yeah, stay in and wash your hands. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant.